This is going to be the second part, but I have decided to break the second part in two parts, so there's going to be a third one. We're going to start with the reactions of aldehydes and ketones. And just so I give credit to where it is due, I stole a lot of the pictures from the Volhard and Shore book because I use it, so I'm really authorized to steal them. All right, first, before we actually do anything, we're adding nucleophiles to the carbonyl. So we're going to have a carbonyl, whether it's an aldehyde or a ketone, makes really no difference. But what happens is that the carbon of the carbonyl is partial positive, so it attracts nucleophiles. And when the nucleophile attacks, of course, you cannot have a five-bonded carbon, so you need to break the double bond. And when you break a bond, you give the electrons to the most electronegative element. In this case, it's going to be the oxygen at the top. And you're going to now get a nucleophile attached to a tetrahedral carbon, and at the very top I have an oxygen that right now it's negative. This intermediate right here is the intermediate that we arrive at any time we attack any carbonyl. So we're going to call it the tetrahedral intermediate. And when you get a tetrahedral intermediate, you check to see if you have good leaving groups. And this one doesn't happen to have any good leaving groups. Carbons, these are two CH3s right here, are going to be bad leaving groups. And the nucleophile that we just added, we're going to assume that it's also a bad leaving group. So since you don't have any bad leaving groups in solution, then the oxygen is going to pick up a proton from water or from maybe hydronium if you add a little bit of acid. So it picks up a proton and we end up with an alcohol. So that's what we're, what we're going to see in these reactions when we attack the carbonyl of the ketones and the aldehydes. The first reaction we're going to do is a reduction with lithium aluminum hydride. And lithium aluminum hydride has four hydrides and it's a very strong reducing agent. When you actually use lithium aluminum hydride, you have to keep water out of it. So the first step, you just add the lithium aluminum hydride in an ether solvent. And then, at the very end of the reaction, you're going to do what I like to call the quenching. People like to call workup. But we're going to be adding water. And that's where the hydrogen <clears throat> on the oxygen is going to come from. So the hydride is going to be a hydrogen that has two electrons and a simplified mechanism of course would be a hydride attacking the carbonyl forming the tetrahedral intermediate and if you form the tetrahedral intermediate in this particular case you would have two carbons or maybe a carbon and a hydrogen and we just added the hydride this is the hydride from the lithium aluminum hydride and then nothing can leave, so the next step would be when we add the water at the very end, the oxygen picks up a proton from the water. So this hydrogen right here on the oxygen came from the water. This hydrogen came from the lithium aluminum hydride. Now this is a very simplified mechanism that doesn't take into account what the aluminum or the lithium are doing. But we also have a second hydride reagent, not as strong as lithium aluminum hydride, but quite useful nonetheless. It's sodium borohydride. We have seen it before uh, in 3331. But now it's a much easier reducing agent to use. I don't need to have two different steps, and I don't need to have syringes uh, for this reaction. Sodium borohydride can be used in an alcohol. And we see exactly the same thing. The hydride is going to be attached to the carbon. And this hydrogen right here came from the alcohol. So whatever alcohol you're doing, it's gonna, uh, you're using, sorry, it's going to provide the hydrogen that goes on the oxygen. So we have two reducing agents, lithium aluminum hydride, incredibly strong reducing agent, sodium borohydride, is only good for ketones and aldehydes. So in that sense, it's a selective reducing agent. 
I have some examples right here just to make sure that we understand that lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride react with carbonyls. So I have a double bond right here on the left. I am not going to be touching the double bond. It's going to remain in place. Lithium aluminum hydride can only reduce the ketone. This is a ketone, so I reduce a ketone to a secondary alcohol. This is another ketone. I'm using sodium borohydride. Notice that I still have an alcohol. This one is ethanol, but all I'm going to be doing is reducing the carbonyl. I'm not going to touch anything else in the molecule. The one at the bottom is an aldehyde. And notice that I have an alcohol on the left. Lithium aluminum hydride can only reduce the carbonyl. So it will take that aldehyde to the primary alcohol. So aldehydes are reduced to primary alcohols ketones are reduced to secondary alcohols and we have two examples of that. Alright, this is one of my favorite reactions. It's the addition of a green yard or an organolithium if you have it to a carbonyl. <clears throat> and the green yard is a carbon that's actually negatively charged and it's basically a salt of magnesium. So I have two negative charges and I have my magnesium in the, in the middle between them. But what's important again is that the carbon that's attached to the magnesium, that's a nucleophilic carbon. It has a negative charge. So it will attack the carbonyl. It will form a tetrahedral intermediate. And this tetrahedral intermediate actually shows that for every negative charge there has to be a counter ion, so the magnesium is going to be next to the negative oxygen. There are no good leaving groups in my tetrahedral intermediate, so the oxygen picks up a proton from the acid at the end of the reaction, and I get, in this particular case, I get a secondary alcohol. Anytime you, you attack an aldehyde with a green yard, you're going to make a secondary alcohol. If you attack formaldehyde, that's going to produce a primary alcohol. If you attack aldehyde secondary alcohols, and if you attack a ketone, you're going to get a tertiary alcohol out of that reaction. Alright, let's do a couple of problems in here. Um, let's attack formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is your most simple aldehyde, and you can attack it with green yards or organolithiums. So I'm going to use phenyl magnesium chloride. And again, the carbon that's attached to the magnesium, this is a nucleophilic carbon. So it's going to attack the carbonyl, form a tetrahedral intermediate. And the tetrahedral intermediate, I have two hydrogens attached to it, to the carbon and I just attached a benzene ring to it. It doesn't have any good leaving groups. It has two hydrogens, terrible leaving groups, and a phenyl group. It just came in. Let's not kick it out. So when you quench the reaction, when you're working it up with water or maybe hydronium, the oxygen is going to pick up the hydrogen from the water And that's going to give you your, in this case, primary alcohol. If you take an, uh, a ketone, let's take 2-pentanone, and let's use an organolithium for variety. So we are going to use methyl lithium. So you add methyl lithium to it and then you go ahead and you add water to the reaction but the methyl is going to attack the carbonyl form your tetrahedral intermediate I just added a second methyl so now I have two methyls my oxygen is negative no good leaving groups carbons are not leaving groups so when I add the water that's when the hydrogen picks up the the 
hydrogen right there. The oxygen picks up the hydrogen. And this one right here is a tertiary alcohol. So whenever I attack a ketone, I'm going to add a third carbon group to the carbonyl and I get a tertiary alcohol out of that reaction. All right, we have seen the terminal alkynes and we learned not too long ago that when you use a strong base, uh, maybe butyl lithium or in this case sodium amide, I can deprotonate with the base, I can deprotonate the terminal alkyne and I can have that negative carbon which is going to be a strong nucleophile it's also going to be a strong base but every negative has to have a positive so there's going to be a sodium in there all right I'm going to use this as a nucleophile so I'm going to take an aldehyde or a ketone I, I'm going to use an aldehyde in this case and I'm going to add my nucleophile that we just made So the carbon is negative, I'm not putting the sodium in there, but it's implied that every negative is, has a counter ion. Triple bond is going to attack the carbonyl, and it's going to form a tetrahedral intermediate. The tetrahedral intermediate, you always check for good leaving groups. Bad leaving group, bad leaving group, bad leaving group. So when you quench the reaction as a second step, or you work it up, whichever term you want to use, you get the alcohol. So this type of reaction gives you a lot of um, yeah, potential because now you can do all kinds of reactions to the triple bond. So let's do something to the triple bond. Let's try again the alkylation with the acetylide ion. I am going to go right here and I'm going to say, oh, there's a sodium there, so the carbon is negative. And this carbon is going to attack my benzaldehyde. It's going to get me a tetrahedral intermediate. I am fond of drawing the tetrahedral intermediates. I don't know if you have noticed. And if it doesn't have any good leaving groups, then you protonate so you get the alcohol. So don't leave that negative oxygen You're just flying around. Always put the hydrogen on it if you do not have any good leaving groups. But now I have a second reaction, and it's a hydrogenation with Lindlar's catalyst, Lindlar's palladium. And we know that that Lindlar's, it's going to be the cis addition of hydrogen. I should have said the syn addition of hydrogen. I'm sorry. And I'm going to add two hydrogens to that triple bond, and I'm going to get this cis double bond out of that addition. I still keep my alcohol intact. I come over here, and I'm going to make sure that I draw this cis double bond. So you add the hydrogens on the same side. All right, let's see what we have next. We're going to hydrate ketones and aldehydes. And when you hydrate, when you add water to the carbonyl, you can do it under acidic or basic conditions. I have acidic conditions right here. But what's going to happen is that you're going to form a hydrate. Notice that I have two OHs attached to the same carbon. So that is a geminal diol. Geminal meaning that the two groups that we're looking at are attached to the same carbon. So the geminal diol, it's not a favored reaction. But it's useful for us because we can actually just compare the reactivity with water and we can see which carbonyl is going to be more reactive. So, I have the equilibrium constants of a ketone and aldehyde, and I have formaldehyde right here. And what we're basically trying to figure out is how much the groups attached to the carbonyl can donate. 